Our theme for the year is speak truth in love. I got mixed up. I think I put the, this one's supposed to be downstairs and the other one's supposed to be upstairs. Anyways, that's our theme. Speak truth in love. And uh, that's what we're supposed to do. And uh, we've done our uh, memory verses. Uh, can anybody remember uh, Ephesians 4 verse 15? But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Okay. Well, let's see if you... Uh, in February, our memory verse was Ephesians 4.25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we members one of another. We're not doing too good here. Now, let's see if we can do... Now, this was only last week. Uh, March, 1 John 3.18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in deed, but in deed... Sorry, I did it wrong. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Okay, let's say now John 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto him. But me, I am doing very, very bad this morning. Uh, um... I'm sorry about that. It's, I have to say, uh, I'm only getting about three hours sleep a night, and it's, my head is not as clear, so you can be praying for me. Okay, so Jesus is speaking, and he says unto him, who is the him? Thomas. Thomas, exactly. So Jesus is speaking to Thomas, uh, and he says now, he declares something. He said, I am the way. The, is that singular or plural? Singular. singular. So there's only one way. The truth and the life. And then he closes the door to any other way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I want us to consider this. Jesus is the source of truth. Jesus said unto him, <clears throat> I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is, was the living truth. Truth incarnate, truth in the flesh. And we can only come to him because there is no salvation but through him. You know, understand this. Everything that God does, Satan imitates. And God said there is only one way to Jesus Christ. But the world says, well, there's many ways. The, the God, Jesus said, I am the only way to get the, to the Father. The world says there's many ways. Uh, uh, you can get to Dublin from Belfast. You can get to Dublin from Galway. You can get to Dublin from Limerick. You can get to Dublin from Cork. And they say like those, all those roads lead to Dublin. That's not the same. There's one road that leads to eternal life. That's Jesus Christ. Nobody else died for your sins. Mary didn't die for your sins. Uh, uh, Joseph didn't die for your sins. The, the, the best person that you know didn't die for your sins. Nobody can die for your sins but Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, there's many people around the world today uh, thinking Buddha is the answer and he's not. Jesus is the answer. There's many people thinking Muhammad it was the great prophet and, and, and uh, Jesus was only a prophet. No, Jesus is said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way than Jesus Christ. Mary is not the way. Joseph Smith, uh, the, the Mormons, uh, there, there are so many people, new revelations coming uh, and saying, I am the way. No, there is only one way, Jesus Christ. And maybe many, many people think, I can get to heaven my way. But you can't get to heaven your way. You can only come through Jesus Christ. It's very clear. I am the way, the only way. I am the tr uh, truth, the only truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus makes it very plain that you can only get to heaven through him. John Gill said, he is not only true, but truth itself. Now, just turn back to John chapter 1 for a moment. John chapter 1. And 
and verse 14. Okay, I'm going to start in verse 1. In, be in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Word was God. So, who is the Word? Well, Jesus Christ is the Word. Uh, he, was in, uh, uh, he was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to come the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so now in verse 14. And the word was made flesh. That's Jesus Christ. Was made flesh. Jesus Christ had to become a man so that he could die for your sins. So that he could take your place. And so he became a man. It, 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 it's a... It's a beyond my understanding that God but God the Son took upon him flesh so that he could die for me and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and what? Truth. Truth. This is the nature of God. Understand this. God is true. That is his nature. When we think about nature uh, that's what he's like. Um, you can say to me, Pastor, flap your arms hard and fast and you'll fly. <laughs> I can fl flap my arms as fast as I could, but I can never fly. It's, it's not my nature. But God, His nature is, He's holy. What, what else is about His nature? God is love, merciful, kind, gracious, long-suffering. He's omnipotent, what, that's a big word, all-powerful. He's omniscient, all-knowing. Uh, omnisapient, all-wise. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, uh, but that's another story. Those are his nature, and, and his nature is also what? Truth. Speak the truth. So when we're speaking the truth, we are talking about God and Jesus Christ. That's his nature. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment of God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. The reason people don't want the truth is because they don't want what? God. That's it exactly. People want to say, well, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. It does matter. When you reject truth, you're rejecting God because God is truth. Uh, so many churches and so many uh, people say, I'm going to do it my way. Listen, every church has to be run according to the word of God. And if they don't, it's not according to what? Truth. And if it's not according to truth, it is not God honoring. Uh, I'm a Baptist. Why am I a Baptist? I'll tell you why I'm a Baptist. Because Baptists believe in biblical authority. No other authority. This is my authority. I, I have no other authority. And I, I did not get saved and, and, and start attending a Baptist church. I started attending a Salvation Army. And I said, well, why don't, you, why don't we have uh, the Lord's Supper? Oh, well, we, that's not, not that important. Why don't we... Why isn't there baptizing? Well, that's not important. Listen, I mean, I am so thankful that I got saved uh, basically because of the Salvation Army. But they didn't believe the truth. They rejected truth. And, and, and there's lots of truth that they di didn't follow. Listen, if a church is going to be God's church, it's got to be according to what? Truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And uh, people say it doesn't matter. When people say truth doesn't matter, what are they really saying? Who doesn't matter? Jesus. God. Jesus doesn't matter. That's what they're saying. They're literally rejecting God. I, I have had people say, well, would you come to this meeting? And I say, well, there's people there that believe that the, you get to heaven by being baptized as a baby. How could I do that? And they say, well, we, we don't talk. Those things don't matter. Hey, truth matters. Amen? Because God matters. God matters to me, and God is truth. And so we need to be building a life. Now, our theme 
is speak the truth in love. So we need to speak the what? Truth. Listen, I, I, I'm telling you the truth, I, I, and I, I hope that you get it out of a heart of love. The reason I'm a Baptist is because that's what the Bible teaches. I didn't know that when I first got saved. But as I, I uh, found out and, and I realized what the Bible said, I said, okay, I've got to follow truth. And um, that's the way it is. If you, if, you, if you want the truth, you've got to, if you want God, you've got to say truth matters. Amen? If you want God, you've got to understand everything I say, do, and believe has to be according to His Word. That's the truth. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Timothy here. This is very important. 1 Timothy. Chapter 2. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom to be testified in due time. Let's look at this. The God our Savior. So what's God's will? who will have all men to be what? What does he want all men to be? Saved. That goes against another thing, Calvinism. Calvinism says God wants some people in hell and God wants some people in heaven. No, God wants everybody where? To be what? Saved. Saved. I had to say, okay, that's wrong. God's right. Now, but, and to come under the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? Okay, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. The truth is that, that you're a sinner and I'm a sinner and that there's only one way that we can get to heaven through the mediator, Jesus Christ. I got saved when I was 17 years old. and I, I, I've told this story before. Uh, I got saved. I, I just want to tell people about Jesus Christ after I got saved and, and I, I'm in my last year in secondary school and so we got this uh, class it's called creative living and uh, the teacher said okay uh, what's going to happen in this class is uh, you will be uh, marked on your participation so okay I, that's fine so you got this book I'm okay you're okay and uh, he says, now what, what does everybody think about this? And I said, well, and he said, okay. And uh, so I told him, well, actually, I don't believe you're okay, and I don't believe I'm okay. I said, I believe that we're all sinners, and that's why Jesus Christ died. And I, I told him the gospel, and I didn't get a very good mark in the class. <laughs> but uh, anytime I got a chance, I told him the truth. The truth is, I'm not okay. The truth is, I'm a sinner. If you look at your heart, be honest. Did you ever lie? Yeah. Did you ever use a curse word? Yeah. Were you ever angry? Yeah. Did you ever hurt somebody? Yeah. That's because you're a sinner. And if you weren't a sinner, Jesus wouldn't have to die. If there was anything you can do to pay for your sin, why would Jesus die? But there is no other way because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. For there is one mediator. What's a mediator? Go between. go between two offended parties, okay? Uh, so, uh, Owens and I have an argument, and Priscilla says, okay, let me, let, let me step in here and help things sort things out. But understand this. Jesus had to become a man so they could see from man's point of view. And he died for us. For there is one God and one mediator between man, God and man, the, my, the man, Christ Jesus. Now verse 6. Who gave himself a ransom to be testified in due time. A ransom is a price paid to free. Jesus Christ died on the cross. I love this. This is a crown of thorns. Because of his love for us, he paid the price. He paid the price, the ransom, 
so that I can get to heaven. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. And God wants everybody to know that. John 8.32 And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Praise the Lord. I am free in Christ because I know the truth. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to John 17. God in his knowledge and his foresight knew people would say, well, what's truth? So he answers it. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify, set apart as holy. So we're, we're to, we're, how are we to live? Through God's... How do we live a holy life? Through God's what? Word. word. That's it, the truth. Thy word is truth. God's word is 100% true. Because God is 100% true. Amen? That's his nature. God cannot lie. God is truth. And the truth frees me from the bondage of sin. It frees me to serve God. So, God the Father is truth. God the Son is truth. What about the Holy Spirit? We were, our, our text verse is in John 14, so let's go back there. John 14. Verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit, in the Old Testament, would come upon somebody. It's kind of like, imagine a coat upon them. But when you get saved in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit, he said, he, where did he say he, he's going to be in this verse? Anybody get it? In you. In you. The very second you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. The book of Acts was a transition. Transition from what to what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well. Is it from the Old Law, New Law, Old Testament, New Testament, from Jewish believers to Gentile believers. And you see a transition. And so basically from verses, uh, verses chapters 1 to 10, you're seeing a change. And by chapter 10, uh, you're, you're seeing uh, all believers, once they're saved, they have the Spirit of Christ in them. And the Bible says if you have not the Spirit of Christ if you don't have it, you are none of His. Listen, the very second you get saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And He dwells in you. And He's the Spirit of truth. Look at John 16, verse 13. How be it, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. So what is the Holy Spirit going to do in your life? Guide you into what? All truth. Listen, this is the important thing. You can't pick and choose, well, I like this truth about this, but I don't like this truth about that. And that's what most Christians do. They pick and choose, well, I, I like it that God says love, oh, but I don't like it God says I'm supposed to live a holy life. You can't do that. He will guide you into what? All, All truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak unto you, and he will show you things to come. God wants the truth in our life and the Holy Spirit will build us in truth so that we can speak the truth in love. Very hard to speak the truth if you don't know it. Uh, I don't know Tamil. I don't know Hindi. I don't know Arabic. I don't know Polish. I don't know Ukrainian. I can't speak to you in that language, can I? I know English, I can speak to you that. I can, if I don't know it, I can't speak it. So, for me to speak the truth in love, I've got to know the truth. And where is the truth? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. God expects me to be learning his word constantly so that I can represent him to others. 
That's my job. The Holy Spirit will help me to speak the truth. But how? In love. With a broken heart. Satan hates the truth. He is a liar. And the father of it. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. There is a battle going on about what? Truth. Look at it. Jesus is the truth. He's, he's truth incarnate. The Holy Spirit guides us into truth. But uh, Satan is a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. There is no truth in, in, in Satan. Now, he might say something that contains truth, but he will always put a lie in it. It's interesting. When you uh, study... Uh, the temptation of Jesus Christ and when he quotes the Old Testament scripture to, to Jesus do you know what he does? He leaves part out. Well if you leave part out it's not the truth anymore is it? Um, so oh, listen to this in Proverbs chapter 23-23 Buy the truth and sell it not. Wisdom, instruction and understanding we understand this I need to stand for the truth there's so many people go to churches because of culture I, when I was in Bermuda I was still attending Salvation Army I went to a church and you know how many white people are in the congregation one that was me I mean, I could have gone to a closer church, but that was the best church that I knew of at the time. So I, it's not a matter of, you know, uh, uh, do uh, culture, were they the same culture as me? me? No, that was wonderful. I, I learned to eat cassava pie. Anybody ever eat cassava pie? It is fantastic. I love it. I love it. And the, the Bermudians, they actually got it from the Jamaicans, and uh, uh, they would make it for me. They felt sorry for me, poor single fella. But uh, I, I ate pretty good because I was in the Canadian Navy. Uh, but anyways, the point is, I, I went to church because, not because of the color of the skin, not because of, uh, of the music. I went there because at that time, that's the best church I knew of. You know why lots of people go to church? Well, they speak the same language as me. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm Canadian, and everybody else, I'm, I'm coming to church here because Fatty's Canadian too. I, I don't come because of, of, of anybody's uh, nationality, anybody's skin color, anybody's uh, uh, taste in food, and or even if they don't like hockey, I can still accept them. You know, it's it's all to me about what truth. If you don't have truth, you have nothing. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And sadly, many, many churches are sacrificing truth to get people in. That is so sad. Because what are they really sacrificing? God. God. I cannot say God doesn't matter I, 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 to bring people in. We can do all kinds of things to bring people in. But truth matters. Uh, Paul says, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Now I want you to take your Bible and turn to First John, sorry, Third John. Third John. If you remember, I preached on him uh, a few weeks back. The apostle of love. And he loved people. Look at this. It's verse 3 and 4. John says, uh, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. What did? Why was John rejoicing? Because they had the truth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. What does it mean when they, it says they walk in the truth? They live it out in their lives. 
And that made John, the, the, the great aged apostle, rejoicing. Now, look at this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. His children. How are they his children? He led them to the Lord. He led them to the Lord. And the thing that made him so happy about them was what? They the that they walked in the truth. They lived their life according to the truth. Because they're living for Jesus. The only way you can live for Jesus is to live in truth. Amen? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, it's wonderful if people are physically prospering. But it's far, far more wonderful if they're walking in the truth. Uh, I think it's great that we've got a children's ministry now. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, is the truth of God preached from the pulpit? That's, that is the most important thing. I, I was thinking just the other day, you know what, these kids, pretty soon they're going to be teenagers and we'll start a teens ministry again. We used to have a good number of teens come. And uh, I look forward to that. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, is the word of God preached in truth? That's what you and I need. So, let's go back to John 14. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. What a wonderful thing that we don't have to have a troubled heart. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What a wonderful thing. I have a mansion in heaven. Years ago, I was preaching across the states, and uh, I asked the church if I could come and present the work, and so I did. And the preacher got up and preached and said, you don't have a mansion in heaven, you have an apartment. I really felt like I should walk out, and I really didn't know what to do, but I, I thought, you know what, I'm the one that asked if I could have a meeting here, so I felt I should... But I, I thought, how dreadful a thing to say. I've got a mansion in heaven, amen? Who wants an apartment in heaven? Who wants a mansion in heaven? Just three of us want a mansion in heaven, and nobody wants an apartment. Come on, speak... The what? Truth. Who wants an apartment in heaven? Who wants a mansion in heaven? Amen. That's it. I want a mansion in heaven. And that's what God said. And I like the truth. And, and then he said, I, if I, and I go and prepare a place for you. And the truth is, he said, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said he's going to come for us and he's going to take us to heaven. And whither I go, you know the way. And Thomas saith him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto them, him, sorry, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. What a wonderful thing. Jesus is the truth. Now, our theme is to speak the truth in love. If I'm to speak the truth, I'm speaking about who? Jesus Christ. Who did you tell this week about Jesus Christ? I'm supposed to speak the truth in love, amen? So I'm supposed to be telling others about Jesus Christ. I'm supposed to tell them the truth, that, that, uh, 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 that Jesus died for them. Uh, this week, uh, my wife and I, we had to go somewhere, and then we went to Clonakilty, and we had a burritos. But uh, where we were going to go... <laughs> We got there, and uh, there's a the, uh, farmer's market. It wasn't there. So Mrs. Smith stopped somebody and said, uh, uh, do you have the farmer's market? And they gave us directions. And then I said to the person, here, let me give you directions. And I gave them a leaflet and told them, this will tell you how to get to heaven. You know, you've got to speak the truth. If you don't tell others about Christ, who's going to do it? They don't rain tracks from heaven. I mean, I haven't seen them falling. 
It's you and me. God wants to speak the truth through who? Me. Let's say it. God wants to speak the truth through me. And it's, it's, it's love that, that would tell somebody, listen, you're a sinner and you're on your way to hell. But God loves you and he, Jesus Christ died for you. I've told you many times and I'll, I'll tell you many times till, till God takes me home. I am so thankful my brother told me about the Lord Jesus Christ. My brother got saved in prison and uh, he told me there was a change in him. And he told me. And at first I mocked and made fun but God kept working on my heart and he kept telling me about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ saved me so that I did, wouldn't end up there too. He saved me from hell. He saved me and gave me a home in heaven. I'm so thankful. Listen, if you're here this morning and you've never been born again, you need to be born again. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But earlier in the book, he said in John chapter 3, he's talking to a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, and he told him the truth. In John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said, you've got to be born again. And Nicodemus had no idea. Nicodemus thought this is some sort of physical birth. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus explained to him, you need two births. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. That's capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. He cannot enter in the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. You see, I heard the truth the first time when I was 17 years old. I'd been to church a number of times. And you know what? To my knowledge, I never heard the truth that I was a sinner on my way to hell. And without Jesus Christ, I, could, I would die and go to hell. What a sad thing. Could you imagine that? Going to church and not hearing the truth. And the truth is this. And we know this verse, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. The truth of the matter is that Jesus Christ died in your place and if you would just believe in him alone, you wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. It's not Jesus Christ and good works. It's not Jesus Christ and religion. It's Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wages, that's something you earn. What do you deserve for your sin? You have to come to knowledge of truth and say, yes, I deserve to go to hell. That's what I deserve. And I had to come to that point. Uh, I, but it was easy for me. I, 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 knew, I, I knew I was doing a lot of things I shouldn't have done. And uh, I knew if I got what I deserved, I'd die and go to hell. And I asked my brother, well, how can one man die for another man's sin? And he explained to me how Jesus Christ is God. God the Son, and when He died, He died for my sins. Not just every sin that I had ever done, but every sin that I ever would do, He died for them. And so, it's by grace. What's grace? A free and undeserved gift. That's how this person saved, by trusting in Jesus Christ alone. For God sent not a Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God wants you saved. If you're here this morning and you do not know how to be saved, I would love to show you from the Word of God. Question. Are you standing for truth? If you're standing for truth, you're standing for God. Don't say you're, you're standing for God if you don't stand for truth. Second, are you studying the truth? How can I speak the truth in love if I don't know it, right? Can I? If, if I want to speak uh, uh, Hindi, I've got to study Hindi. If I want to speak uh, Tamil, I've got to sp study Tamil. If I want to sp speak Polish, I've got to study Polish. Uh, if I want to speak for God, I've got to study His Word. Because it's the truth. I just have a question for you, and I want you to think about this. Is truth important to you? I want you to think about it. Stop and think. Is truth important to you? Is, are you making truth a priority in your life? Jesus Christ is the truth. 
I want to encourage you this morning. If you're not saved, come to the knowledge of the truth, Jesus Christ. If you are saved, stand for Jesus Christ because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I am the way, singular, not a way, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. You can't get to heaven any other way but Jesus Christ. I would encourage you, get saved today. Christian, stand for the truth, love the truth, share the truth. Let's close in a word of prayer.